The second edition of Daily Motor Sound System tier list. I'm surprised so many of you were interested in another version of this list because things don't really change too dramatically from one year to the next. But we have seen some notable changes as well as additions to the original ranking, so let's get right into it. Just like last year, we're not including any brands that I haven't tested thoroughly enough to be confident in a ranking. That includes Alfa Romeo, Aston Martin, Ferrari, Fiat, Land Rover, Lotus, Lucid, Polestar, Rivian, Maserati, and McLaren. Once I've tested a few more of these, we can add them to the list, but leave yourselves out of the comments asking, oh, why don't you have Land Rover in there? Tell them to give me more cars, that's, that's all I have to say. I should also point out that this list is based on a subjective mixture of our evaluations of these brands' sound systems, how much these brands seem to care about in-car audio, and how much value they provide in their segments. So let's get right on into it. And guess what? No more F-tier brands! Honda was our sole F-tier nameplate last time, and thanks to their introduction of Bose-branded audio in the new Civic, CRV, and Accord, they certainly don't deserve to be bottom barrel anymore. Wow, it's almost like they watch Daily Motor. Moving up the ladder then to E-tier. Just one manufacturer is finding themselves in E this year, and that's Mitsubishi. I went back and forth between E and D for Mitsubishi, but looking over their lineup and the few vehicles I've tested from them, E seems to be the best fit. Maybe if the new Outlander were a B or an A tier, it would help to offset the trash audio in the rest of their cars. But Mitt just doesn't seem too concerned with sending their cars out onto the streets with bargain systems, and they shouldn't be rewarded for that. Moving to D tier. D tier systems start to represent the lower bulk of the mainstream brands. These are brands that consistently put out below average audio systems, and their upgraded systems have poor mixing or just lack power. These systems might sound impressive for some songs, but once you turn up some complex music, you'll realize that you might just be better popping in some earbuds. Right where they were last year are the Stellantis brands of Dodge, Chrysler, and Ram. Every Dodge we've driven has had way too much bass, and the Harman systems in all three of these brands are poorly mixed and too harsh in the mid-ranges. We also don't like how these systems have tons of speakers, but yet still sound sloppy. More isn't always better, Stellantis. Next in the D tier is Nissan. Nissan has had a partnership with Bose for nearly two decades now, and their sound quality sounds just as stale. Many people like to bash on Bose, but not all of their systems are bad. But when we see a Bose in a Nissan, we know that it's just not going to be great. That being said, the redesigned Frontier and Pathfinder are much stronger than previous models, and that surprisingly, the Kix has better audio than most of its competitors, but that's still not to say it's very good. If this continues and Nissan can put better systems in newer cars, they might earn a bump for next year. Chevy, along with its corporate twin GMC, takes the next spot here in the D tier. Another brand that's relied heavily on Bose for several years and doesn't seem to care too much about audio quality. Chevys are at least helped by having some of the best infotainment systems for a mainstream brand, and the redesigned full-size truck interiors are much better than before. However, the Bose Surround and the Yukon Denali Ultimate did not befit the vehicle's $100,000 price. The only one notable exemption is the Corvette, which has some of the best audio in any sports car for sale today. Our first brand to drop a ranking from the last list is actually Subaru. Subaru sports Harman Kardon for their premium systems, but they're on the weaker end of Harman Kardon's offerings with way too much mid-range and weak power. I will say, the new WRX's top tier system is a big improvement from what we tested in 2020, but the BRZ was a huge disappointment. Also, you typically have to pony up for pricey top trims to escape these awful base systems, and we don't like the giant, laggy infotainment screens. Give us physical climate controls and you might get C-tier back, Subaru. In the other direction, leaping two rankings from F is Honda. Honda still finds itself near the bottom because its base systems are woeful, and you can only find their new Bose systems in the very top trims. However, we do appreciate that Honda is making an effort to improve their audio systems. On top of that, their infotainment is very straightforward. So, good job, Honda. Now, C-tier. C-tier systems will be perfectly acceptable for casual listeners and casual listening. Some of the premium models and systems from these brands might actually sound really good, but lower models are still nothing to write home about, and you'll have to pony up to get the good ones. First up is Ford. 
The Blue Oval has managed to maintain a small advantage over its domestic counterparts in the audio game, with even their base systems managing to carry a bit of power. Their partnership with Harman and its B&O brand seems to be paying off. The B&O Unleashed systems in the F-150 and Expedition really impressed us, and Ford's sync infotainment has progressed slowly but surely, always seeming straightforward to use. We don't love the new extra-large screens and they're not very responsive to touch, but at least the audio sounds good. What gives Ford an extra edge over many others in its class is that even the worst systems, like the six-speaker audio in our Ford Maverick, are decently balanced. All of Volkswagen's systems are just decent. The Fender sound systems sound okay for a premium option, and their bass radios are okay for their prices as well. Infotainment is simple but effective. And like the rest of their cars, the Volkswagen systems get the job done, and that's about it. However, we should point out the base Jetta we tested was one of the worst audio systems we've ever heard, so that weighs Volkswagen down a bit into the C tier. Kia nearly escaped the C-Class, but we couldn't for the life of us remember an outstanding Kia sound system, so there's no reason for it to be awarded a higher tier. Not only that, but their new models like the Sportage and EV6 come guns blazing with a Meridian system that falls flat in both vehicles. Most music will sound okay on any Kia, but audiophiles can do better. Kia's more and more distant cousin, Hyundai, also falls to C this year. It barely snuck into B tier for 2021, but after testing more of their 22 and 23 models, a high C grade seems more fitting. Their top Bose and Harman Kardon systems are just okay, but some of the systems in the base cars are really bad. Last on the C tier list is Lamborghini. To be fair, we haven't tested an Urus, but the base system in the Huracan is enough to keep Lambo below many less expensive brands for audio quality. Not only that, but their touchscreen infotainment system is the only way to adjust volume in their cars, and that can be borderline dangerous when you're driving a 630 horsepower V10 machine. Now, if we were basing the ranking strictly on exhaust sound, now that'd be an entirely different story. Finally, the brands that have it down. B-tier brands have solid radios in every model they make, and their premium offerings are truly class-leading. Because of the collection of excelling mainstream brands and lagging luxury brands, B is our biggest tier. First up is Cadillac. When we first tested the 36-speaker AKG system in the new Escalade, we got really excited about what was to come from this new partnership. However, after testing the CT4 and CT5 with both Bose and then AKG systems, we were disappointed to find that there really wasn't much improvement. These systems are strong, but they're not class leading like we were hoping to see. Maybe the Lyric will blow us away if we ever get into one. Toyota actually snuck into B at the very last minute. Toyota's partnership with JBL results in some great systems and some real disappointments. For example, the older Avalon and Camry were sloppy and weak, but the Highlander and RAV4 carried some serious power, and most recently, the Grand Highlander and Prius Prime we tested were simply great. Toyota is focusing on providing one of the better experience in the more affordable segments, and they deserve recognition for that. This one might ruffle some feathers, but our next B-tier system is Tesla. We've spent extended time in the Model 3 and Model Y, and their upgraded systems are strong. However, because Tesla doesn't provide press review vehicles, our evaluation is limited to these smaller cars. The biggest downfall for our Model Y is Tesla's compression algorithm at softer listening levels. Teslas have great speakers and power, and with better mixing and more evaluation, we might place them into the A tier in future tests. The next B tier brand loves to overpromise and underdeliver, and if they don't settle down, they'll find themselves in C tier next time. Lincoln loves to brag about how many speakers their Revel systems feature, but we've heard more impressive audio from half as many speakers. Unfortunately, their top Revel systems do sound great, and the cheaper systems aren't that bad either. Cadillac provides great systems in some cars and terrible systems in others, but Lincoln is more consistent in every vehicle. Porsche is one of our favorite brands for one reason. Their cars are just so nice to drive. But outside of that, Porsches are not the pinnacle of luxury, and their stereos confirm that. But don't get me wrong, their Burmester systems are pretty darn good, but compared to other luxury vehicles asking the same price, they fall short. Also, the more basic systems are just that. Basic. But when the engines sound as good as they do in most Porsches, do you really care? Jeep sneaks their way into B tier for their marked commitment to providing more upscale audio in their upper models. 
We're seeing cool Macintosh systems in the new Grand Cherokee and Wagoneer, and while they might not be the best sounding in their class, we appreciate that Jeep is showing that they care about sound quality. And even the Alpine system in the 23 Compass that we tested is strong for its price and class. Genesis has been killing it since they walked onto the scene through the mid-20-teens. Their Lexicon sound systems are good enough to not be offensive for their class and price, but like the rest of the car, Genesis cars mostly only stand out given their price point. When compared to the top tier Burmester and Bowers and Wilkins systems in the luxury cars, they do fall a little bit short. Most recently, the GV60 was simply disappointing, and the G90 was good but not fantastic. Now, how does a niche brand like Mini sneak themselves up into the B tier? Well, at less than $40,000 for many of their models, you get a solid Harman Kardon sound system with class-leading adjustability and a nifty infotainment system. Many people don't think of Mini as often as they should, but if you want a fun driving experience and good audio to boot, you really ought to check them out. Lexus is arguably the most remarkable change since the first ranking list. When we first started reviewing audio, the Lexus GX and LX stood out as some of the most pure, warm, and powerful systems we'd ever experienced. But since then, the top tier Mark Levinson systems in the RX, NX, LX, and TX have all left us wanting more. While the sound is still strong, the fact that Lexus is moving backward with some of their new models is concerning. They are helped by the new touchscreen infotainment system that is vastly improved over the old screens, but we miss the classic powerful Mark Levin systems of old. A tier brands. To make it to A tier, you have to really stand out, and we can easily remember testing these systems and, more importantly, enjoying them. Infinity is often forgotten about in the luxury segment, but their Bose systems have been strong for years. They're not super fancy, and their dated infotainment screens don't provide much audio adjustment or fancy sound modes, but all of their models sound crisp, powerful, and clean, and the Q50 even comes with a CD player. In fact, the 2023 QX80 surprised us with one of the best audio systems we had ever heard from their Bose Performance Series. Audi finally makes it onto the tier list. So many of you have asked where Audi was on the first ranking, and we simply hadn't driven enough of their vehicles to get a fair evaluation. But now we have, and just like their cars, they're crisp and solid. Our biggest gripe with the Audi Bang & Olufsen systems is their gimmicky 3D modes that stray too far from the original sound recordings. Fun features are okay, but the ceiling speakers don't add any benefit with 3D off. Also, their new partnership with Sonos didn't result in an impressive product in the Q3, and hopefully that's not a sign for future models. It might be nutty to have a mainstream brand in A tier, but gosh darn it, you can get into a $34,000 Mazda and rock out harder than you can in a $100,000 Lincoln. Visual EQ, complimentary sound modes, and great balance, these Bose systems and Mazdas are some of our favorites on the market. We will concede the base systems are considerably less impressive, but they're still better than a lot of Mazda's classmates. Some may not care for the rotary knob infotainment systems, but once you get used to it, it's a nice way to keep your eyes on the road and your fingerprints off the screen. Oh, and the Mazda Miata doesn't sound great over all the road and wind noise, but no one buys a Miata for the radio. It's not the explicit audio quality that gets Mazda onto the A-tier list necessarily, but rather their consistent commitment to class above listening experiences. I really wanted to push BMW into S-tier this time, and, and just until before I recorded this, they had earned S-tier with the i4, iX, and 7 series. But then as I was reviewing the rankings, I checked back and was reminded that the 2 series, X2, 4 series, and X5 were all a bit underwhelming for their class and price. I do very much appreciate BMW's new iDrive systems, their 9-band equalizers, and the fancy sizzle reels that they provide and they're probably at the top of my A-tier brands, but they're just too inconsistent to get themselves into that top S-tier. It feels a bit silly to give Jaguar a ranking, but technically we've tested enough of them to give them A. Nothing really more to say other than they sound great and have nice infotainments. Next. Similar to Jaguar, it's not much of a surprise that Bentley earns themselves an A. If all of your models cost over $100,000, you'd have to be uncharacteristically bad to earn a lower ranking. We only have a video on the 20 speaker name in the Bentega, but we've also heard the Continental and Flying Spur, and they're all a solid A. Last in the A tier comes Acura. 
Interestingly enough, when I originally wrote the last list, it was before we had tested the new MDX and its 16 speaker ELS Studio 3D system, and we actually had Acura up in S tier. We were thoroughly impressed with the TLX's system, and we had heard that the MDX was supposed to be even better. This, along with Acura's clear dedication to building a reputation in the sound system game, had led us to initially giving them an S tier ranking. However, the MDX did not quite live up to our expectations, and therefore we dropped Acura down to A. It's still an impressive rating, but not up at the tippy top. The Integra's ELS system that we tested this year is also very good, but helps affirm our A tier ranking. And finally, the S tier. These brands not only provide top-notch sound quality across their lineup, but their premium offerings give us goosebumps. The engineers and designers clearly care about audio quality, and their marketing departments know how their customers care about audio too. First up is Mercedes-Benz. Not only are some of our favorite systems found in Mercs, but even their base cars like the GLA and A-Class have been impressive for their prices. Newer Mercedes-Benzes have been all about being showy, and some of their sound settings bored gimmicky, especially in the new Burmester 4D systems but people generally appreciate feeling like they're getting something in return for paying for the top system. Mercedes has been going harder with lighting and audio effects than Audi or BMW, and Mercedes have one of my favorite sound system features across the market, the ability to fine tune an EQ setting. It actually has a tutorial that walks you through fine tuning your audio, and, and I really think that this is a, a great way to go about personalizing a sound system experience. We thought about dropping Mercedes into A tier for this year to match BMW and Audi, but after looking back at our videos and the fact that even a convertible SL was an S tier sound system, we thought top honors were in order. Next up, the most luxurious cars on the road, Rolls Royce. We've been fortunate enough to spend time with the Cullinan, Spectre, and Phantom, and even the quote unquote base 16 speaker sound system was one of the most satisfying systems that we'd ever heard. The quietness of their cabins, even at highway speeds, enhances the listening experience. If you're paying for the best, you expect the best, and Rolls-Royce doesn't disappoint. Last on the list, and our personal favorite, is Volvo. Whenever we have a Volvo on the schedule, we get excited to listen to all of our favorite loud, complex music. Pop in some uncompressed tracks and be submerged in the best balance between pure sound and enhancement that the new car market has to offer. You do get a few gimmicks with the top Bowers & Wilkins system, such as a sound mode that replicates the Gothenburg Symphonic Orchestra Hall, but these are easy enough to ignore if that's not your thing. It doesn't matter if it's a sedan, wagon, or SUV, or if it's just a mid-level Harman Kardon option, any Volvo will be impressive. And at just $55,000 for the basic Bowers & Wilkins sound systems, you don't need to spend top dollar to get into an amazing car audio experience, you just have to order from Sweden. or. China. Now, Volvo is debuting a new partnership with Bose in their upcoming EX90, and we're nervous. Please don't ruin what you have, Volvo, because right now you offer a $60,000 sound system with a car attached. So, only a few years after you all started clamoring for an update, there it is DM Sound's 2024 sound system brand tier list. Some big shifts, even if that only meant changing one or two rankings. There are a few brands that we look forward to introducing next time, but until then, let me know how you disagree because you think the car that you drive deserves to be ranked higher. And you can check out evals of every brand you see here on this channel or over on our main channel for some of our older videos, Daily Motor. And as always, drive on.